4 million households here in Australia have home solar panels, 4 million, which is a big number considering there's only 27 million people in the country and really only about 10 million households. That's a very large percentage. However, of course, as you know, when you're not using your solar, when you're not using the power, it's just pretty much getting wasted here in Australia because of the duck curve. All this solar gets generated during the day. It's not being used. It gets curtailed. We're wasting billions of dollars of electricity. But are we really wasting that much? Well, no. Well, yes and no. The numbers here are pretty staggering. The amount of Australians that have been installing home batteries has skyrocketed. But considering the government has just revealed a $2.3 billion subsidy designed to give you a massive discount on a new home battery, now has been never been a better time to get a home battery. Here are the numbers behind how many Australians are actually doing it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. The latest interim update for the Climate Council's Momentum Monitor has revealed a power increase, well, I should say a powerful increase, in the use of battery systems by Australians, up by 100,000, or almost 30% since 2023. Latest numbers from the Climate Council's Momentum Monitor found the number of household battery systems have grown by almost one-third since 2023. In other words, last year in 2024, we added an additional 33% to the home storage batteries, but that was without these massive incentives. Imagine how many people are gonna actually get batteries now. The Australian energy market operators findings that batteries powered Australians 91% more in the last quarter compared to the same time in 2023 demonstrate their impressive growth over the last 12 months. So within the space of one year, batteries powered households 91% more. That's insane. I mean, these numbers are incredible. More than 4 million Australians already have solar panel systems at home, meaning nearly one in three households, pr pretty much one in three households are using solar to save money and to power their houses. Grid scale battery capacity has also increased enormously, rising 50% over the past year. And state and federal governments are recognizing the need for large scale energy storage. As a result of the next two years, Large-scale energy storage is set to increase by a factor of 5,200% in Australia. I know that figure sounds crazy, but it's actually true. The batteries are already functioning as backup power sources during periods of high demand, as well as shock absorbers during periods of high energy production, making for a more secure energy grid. And really what, what I think the, the key number here is, if we installed, right, 100,000 battery systems since 2023, that doesn't actually include data from 2025. So 100,000 battery systems since 2023 without including 2025, pretty much nearly 100,000 batteries were installed in Australia last year. I think this is the gold rush. I think we're gonna see companies and individuals and businesses making a lot of money and households are gonna be saving a lot of money at the same time. But we're gonna see, I would estimate at least 300,000 batteries installed in Australia this year, at least, because people were thinking to themselves, I'm wasting all this solar, what's the point? Now, they can virtually go, I wouldn't say off grid, but not far off it. They can reduce their battery, their energy bills by an enormous amount by installing a battery. And the average savings people are gonna see from installing a battery will probably work out to about $5,000. Meaning, if you installed a battery and it might cost you, say, $15,000, uh, let's, say, let's say you installed the battery guys that I have, which is an Anker Solix. So I've got an Anker Solix battery. You know, if you put it in a battery like that size, say a 10 kilowatt hour battery, and might cost you say 15 grand, put on the subsidies, you save $5,000, it's gonna cost you only $10,000. You can pay, you can literally pay that back very, very quickly. And if you consider the fact that you might even use your electric car, you might even charge your electric car at nighttime using your battery that you've used to, you know, get all that extra solar you didn't use during the day, you might save money even faster. So yeah, there's gonna be an, an incredible battery rush this year. I'm really excited for it, guys. What are your thoughts on this? Which ones do you think, are, you know, which battery companies do you think are gonna succeed? I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of people installing uh, Tesla Powerwall batteries. That's been a huge revenue generator for Tesla. But also there's been, I mean, new entrants to the market like Sig Energy and their battery. Of course, like I said, the battery I have, which is the Anker Solix. There's quite a few really good options on the market. If you guys are interested, 
I'll do a video comparing the battery options. Thanks for watching. I just saw this information, this article here from Zachary from Clean Technica, and I thought you guys needed to know this. This is a stunning achievement. In California, people are still saying, well, if you've got an electric car, then you're just powering it from coal, so it's not even all that good. But actually, that's not true because two things. California is moving away from fossil fuels so quickly, from gas and coal. But also, many people who own electric cars are not using the grid. They're using actually using solar or they're using solar and batteries together, which is what California themselves are doing, solar and batteries together. In 50 of 82 days in 2025, renewable energy provided more than 100% of California's electricity needs. Now we're talking about a state of over 40 million people. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. It's great to have you with us, I'm Sam Evans. What does this all mean? Well, experts, Many experts now admit to the fact that we do not need this ridiculous idea of base load coming from nuclear or wind. They say you need nuclear base load or gas or coal or wind base load. But actually batteries in California are often providing the base load. Solar power provided the second most electricity in the United States for five hours last week. A huge portion of that is coming from California. Clean Technica says there's far more solar power installed in California than anywhere else in the USA, and it's, well, quite sunny in California as well. Now, I should point out it's quite sunny in Texas and uh, Phoenix, in Arizona, in many, many southern states in America. So it, to me, it is a little bit of a surprise that this is not being, solar is not being adopted at a faster pace in southern parts of America. But California is leading the way. Mark Z. Jacobson, Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Stanford University and author of seven books, said on Blue Sky last night that in 50 of the first 82 days of 2025, wind, water and solar power combined for greater than 100% of California's electricity demand for some of the day. So that's a pretty staggering number considering California is still building more solar, still putting out more new batteries which will eventually supplant fossil fuels. The 50th day, Sunday, at their peak, wind, water, and solar power plants provided 150%, well, to be exact, 149% of electricity demand in California. Solar power alone provided 122%. So renewable energy is soaring. Many people still think that having more than 100% is a bad thing. They think, well, all this solar is, is bad because there's too much solar power. That's not actually the case because this solar power is charging California's batteries.